Well, joining us now is Paul Grodd, president of the Ukrainian World Congress. It's an NGO which describes itself as the global voice for Ukrainian people worldwide. Uh, welcome to Sky News, uh, Mr Grodd. Thank you for talking to us. Um, as somebody who's looks out for the interests of Ukrainian people worldwide. We know that more than five million of them have left the country since the war started. Do you have hopes that they will be able to return? Absolutely. And uh, we are working with those, uh, those uh, refugees that have left Ukraine. Our communities around the world in over 60 countries have been actively working with those refugees and helping them with resettlement helping address their uh, immediate needs, uh, their medium-term needs, such as schooling for their children, helping to find jobs, creating job banks, and doing all that's needed to, to ensure that those refugees are, are well taken care of. Having met many of those refugees on the border of Poland and Ukraine over the last few weeks, I know that uh, speaking to them, most of them have family still in Ukraine. Most of them have left their husbands, their sons, their fathers in Ukraine who are today fighting this war. And they, they, they pray to return back to their, their families, back to their loved ones. And that's why the Ukrainian World Congress is actively raising money around the world in order to be able to support those defenders of Ukraine through a project called Unite with Ukraine. And what we're trying to do is provide them with protective equipment that they need, because as we know, the territorial defense forces in Ukraine are a new formation of volunteers who are there fighting for their countries and they need our help. Are you sort of mentally preparing for years more of this conflict? Uh, you know, Samantha, uh, after 2014, when, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, invaded eastern Ukraine, uh, occupied and annexed, uh, illegally annexed Crimea, uh, we knew that this was going to be a long war with Russia. Uh, the only thing that I think the Ukrainian people and the international community was not prepared for was the extent of this war and the extent of the, the human rights abuses, the war crimes, the genocides that are being created, uh, that are being uh, uh, committed in Ukraine. I think no one was prepared for that, but I think it really speaks to really the underlying motivation here, that, the, that, the, that, the, that Russia does not view Ukraine as an independent nation, as a, as a free people. Um, are we pussyfooting around looking for diplomatic solutions to this? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when the war just broke out, we heard about the, the calls around the world uh, for diplomatic solutions. We see that Russia has no interest in a diplomatic solution. Their, their solution is all out control of Ukraine and the region. We see re more, more recently flare-ups of, uh, of conflict in, uh, in Moldova. And as we know, there are several frozen conflicts that Russia has created precisely for these reasons in order to be able to control. We see that Russia does no longer want to control just politically, but they want to occupy and control these people. And, and they want to create a, a, a new Russian empire. And that's what we are facing. And once the world recognizes that Russia is, is trying to recreate its Russian empire uh, that will, go, goes back uh, several hundred years, uh, that uh, that Russian Empire, sorry, a couple hundred years, that Russian Empire uh, will certainly be the scourge of, of Europe. And we also see uh, from history, 100 years ago, what empire building did. And we must put a stop to it today. And that's why Ukraine really needs the sophisticated weapons that finally, after uh, two months, over two months of war, uh, 40 allied countries gathered in Ramstein in Germany three days ago and finally declared that Ukraine must win, Ukraine will win, and are preparing to provide the military equipment that Ukraine really needs. Let's hope they can actually deliver, because that's, I think, been the biggest challenge, is that there have been many countries that have made proclamations, many European countries have made proclamations, but have been very, very slow to deliver. And I'm hoping that those countries countries will take the UK's lead in being very definitive in what they're providing and do it quickly. Yeah, it's starting to come though now, isn't it? I mean, you could argue that it's a couple of months too late. Um, what are your thoughts about uh, the role that could be played by NATO and the UN? I mean, people uncharitably say that NATO stands for no, no action, talking only, and unresponsive nations for the UN. It's, it's the, the response has to be twofold. Number one is providing Ukraine the, the sophisticated military equipment it needs. And it is starting to come, or at least there's talk of it starting to come, but it's far from what it needs to be. 
uh, Ukraine has asked for 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 military uh, uh, planes, uh, bomber bomber uh, jets, uh, fighter jets. They've asked for, for more sophisticated tanks, more sophisticated weaponry, anti-aircraft, uh, anti and uh, anti-marine tanks. Uh, that is still slow to come. We're seeing finally there's talk about well we'll give some of the Eastern European countries new tanks if they give Ukraine their old tanks. I mean that's still not necessarily uh, equipping the Ukrainians to to really win. So that that's number one is is more sophisticated weapons now. Number one. Number two is the economic aspect because don't forget today uh, Europe provides uh, Russia somewhere between 250 million to a billion dollars a day in terms of support for its economy. And that needs to stop because we are essentially paying for Russia's war and occupation of Ukraine. So we need an immediate boycott, embargo, close all ports, all borders, and not just Europe. I mean, Europe is, is the fir first stage. But we have a lot of countries that are still on the fence, countries like India, a lot of e Asian countries are still very much on the fence of not, quote unquote, picking sides, which is inexcusable. All right, so you're looking for a more coordinated global response there. Uh, Paul God, good to talk to you. Thank you.